Okay, in this video we're going to go over auto recovery. We're going to show you how to select a switch to activate auto recovery. We're going to show you how to make sure the switch is going the right way and far enough. Then we're also going to show you how to calibrate the gyros for auto recovery. And finally we're going to show you how to actually use auto recovery in flight. First step for auto recovery, make sure you have the latest firmware in your TG Multi so that it definitely includes the auto recovery part of the firmware. Once you've done that, you're just going to go in and turn the model on like normal. Let it initialize. This one has a green LED coming on, which means that auto recovery is actually green LED 8 which indicates auto recovery is actually already turned on for this one. Let's pretend that light's not on. Yours will not be on when you first do this setup. The, the TG Multi, this version of the firmware, still has your main initial menu where you're setting your neutrals, your limits, your, your pitch and your throttle, and your gain selection channel. That's your first menu. Where you're going to set your auto recovery is in your second group of menus. To get to your second group of menus, you're going to hold this button until two lights come on. When they start flashing, you let go. That puts you in the second set of menus. The first set item in the second set of menus, which is a solid green status light, is actually where you check your gain level. We don't need to change that here, so we're going to go to our second thing, which is a slow flashing green. This is where you're going to select whether you can do auto trim or not. We're not worrying about auto trim right now, although it'll do recovery better if you do set a good auto trim. So go back and watch one of our auto trim videos to let you actually know how to set this. But we're not doing auto trim this time. Go to our third item. This is where you're actually going to select. It's the it's status light is fl fast flashing green. This is where you're going to select what channel is going to do the auto recovery. This one's already been selected. I use the trainer switch as my auto recovery. Now, if I had chosen chosen a different switch, it'll it'll go to a different uh, channel. But I like to use the uh, trainer switch because it's a spring-loaded switch I can hold and let go. Now if you want to deactivate auto recovery you just hit the aileron and it'll go flashing your LED number six that means it's been deactivated but again I want to use the trainer switch I flip it and it tells me it's now active. Now if you want to check that it's going the correct direction and correct amount you hit uh, rudder then your LED one starts flashing yellow if LED 2 is on, that means you're now in the off position for auto recovery. And that's what I want because I'm in the off position with my switch. Now if I go to the on position, you want LED 4 to come on green. So at the moment, my switch is set correctly. Now in some cases, it may be backwards. When, when this is back, it may be saying it's on, so you might need to reverse the channel. It's possible if neither 2 or 4 come on, then the travel on the channel you're using may not be high enough. You may just simply have to run your travel up to get these LEDs to come on. So one issue is the direction, the other issue is the actual total travel. In this case, this one's set up correctly. LED 2 is on when I'm in the off position. LED 4 is lit up when I'm in the on position, which is correct. Next, I'll push the button to toggle to the calibration of the... The two LEDs came on there simply saying that it was setting my switch position. Now. I'm on to the where you calibrate it. Your status light is a solid red and your LED 6 is on green. Okay now when you're going to do the calibration you need to make sure to set a straight edge. I'm just using a box here on the front of the model. This will allow you to always come back to the same position as far as rotation wise uh, after each level of the calibration. Also as you're doing calibration when you do a roll you want to do your best to keep it as flat as you can without a lot of elevator movement. When you're doing an elevator flip again you don't want to do rudder or aileron. Same thing with rudder. When you lift it up and do rudder you want to be as flat as you can when you calibrate it. If you're off on any of those it's generally okay but the further off you are the less accurate it'll be when you actually do the auto recoveries. So let's do our first auto recovery. Your again status light is red you have LED 6 is on, which means you're ready to do your, you're about to do your right aileron calibration. Now to turn on calibration, you hit aileron, that turns on this uh, LED 1, which says, okay, I'm ready to calibrate now. And this is a right roll. You pick the model up and do three right rolls. One, two, three. Make sure to get the model back down about the same place, squared up. When it's done, you're going to hit aileron to finish the calibration. It turned off, it's fine. 
Now you use rudder to toggle to your next thing, which is left aileron. Now the way to keep the logic of this programming, rudder is going to toggle you between the selections. Aileron is the one that's going to turn on calibration and then save calibration. So that, that is just to understand, explain the logic. Right now we're again at left aileron because LED2 is on solid. I'm going to hit, hit aileron to turn on calibration. I'm going to do three left rolls. One, two, three. Put the model back down. Hit aileron. Again, it saved it. Now I'm going to toggle rudder again. This has taken me to back elevator. And the LED for back elevator is LED 6 flashing really slow. That's the one for back elevator. So it's just going between 2 and 6, depending on which one you're doing. So I'm ready to calibrate. So I turn on calibration with aileron. Now I do a back elevator. And do 1, 2, 3. And again, I save it. So now it's saved the back elevator. Toggle rudder to toggle the next one. Now it's LED2 flashing slow, which is forward elevator calibration. So I turn on calibration by using aileron. And I do three forward. One, two, three. And then I'm going to hit aileron to store it. And see, it turned to green. That time it flashed green LED 8. That simply means that nothing changed. The previous calibration was fine. Or it's close enough to default they didn't have to change it. Now, if your LED 2, or excuse me, 5 had come on red quickly, that means it was a bad calibration. Something you did was not correct. And you want to go ahead and recalibrate at that same place before you go on to the next one. Okay, but that one was good. It came on uh, your LED. Two is flashing, so that's still your forward elevator. I want to toggle to the next item, which is rudder. Now it's, it's a slow flashing uh, green LED 6, which means I'm doing right rudder. So I want to turn on calibration. I lift it up and do three turns to the right. So it's one, two, three. Set it back down. Again, hit aileron to save it. Again, my LED 8 came on, which means it didn't really change from last time, so they were already a good setting. Toggle rudder to go to my left rudder. Turn on calibration with aileron. Do a left turn three times. One, two, Again, lined up with the straight edge and hit aileron to save it. Again, it didn't change the calibration. So now I've done all of my calibrations, aileron, elevator, and rudder. And now I just need to push P to save it. LED 2 and 6 come on saying it's saved. Also, LED 8 came on. Now it's actually ready to fly if you wanted it to. It's saying it's ready to go. But you do want to power it off just to be sure it saves everything. So it's powered off. Next step, we're gonna to go to actually flying the model to show you auto recovery in action. Okay, let me give a couple of quick notes before we fly. Let's turn the model on like normal, turn throttle hold on, power on the model, let it, let it initialize like normal. When it's done initializing, LED 8 will come on green. That means you are, you're ready for auto recovery. Note, when you fly the model, you're going to fly, fly around, whether you do an auto recovery or not, when you come back down and land, because your auto recovery is on, it's going to turn on a light when you land, indicating if the machine seems to be calibrated properly on your cyclics. In other words, when it lands, and it's assuming you're landing basically level to how you took off, it's going to say, okay, did I think when I landed that I was still level? If it didn't, that may indicate a calibration is wrong. If LED 6 comes on green, that means the machine landed level and it thought it was level. So you're fine. The LED 6 is good. If LED 1 comes on yellow, that could indicate the calibration is okay. The level is off by a little bit. If your LED 5 and 1 are on, that means the calibration is very poor. That when it landed and, and you landed level, it, it thought it was far off from level. So that means you likely need to recalibrate it on an elevator. Now having said that, these lights are not related to rudder. The way you can tell the rudder calibration is if you take off 
say perpendicular to a road and whenever you do auto recovery it tends to point back perpendicular to the road just like the way you took off your, your rudder calibration is good if it's constantly off by 40 45 degrees or more then your rudder calibration is probably not very good you need to redo it uh, off by 10 15 degrees either way is not a big deal that's kind of normal there is a range especially in the wind how it's going to stop but if it's constantly off by quite a bit then you may need to recalibrate the rudder calibration. Also note with the LEDs I talked about where your LED 5 or 2 may be on, uh, that can happen randomly throughout. You, know, you may have five flights where it's green every time, then all of a sudden one flight, these two are off. I only worry about the calibration if these are off for a couple of flights, then you know there's likely a calibration issue. Uh, off just being just off one flight doesn't mean there's a calibration issue. It's important to note this auto recovery is not related to the GPS functionality that's going to be added later. There's no extra sensors added to this model. It's simply your basic Stingray combo kit. We've updated the firmware to include the auto recovery. It's also important to note this kind of auto recovery is used, we use a switch to go into auto recovery. So you fly the model like normal. When you decide you have an issue or you want to do an auto recovery, you simply flip a switch. To let it, you let go of the controls, flip the switch, and let it save itself. Okay, it's important to note the direction you take off in is the direction it's going to go to in auto recovery. In this case, also, the switch I'm using for auto recovery is my right rear trainer switch. It's an assignable switch. I just happen to pick the trainer switch. In its most basic form, it's just going to turn the model back to where you started. So in this case, if I hit trainer switch, it's going to turn the rudder back to the angle I started at. If I get a little more complicated, go inverted. If I flip the switch, it's going to roll the model and turn it. If I get the model diving, flip the switch, it'll level the model out. Back to the angle you started at. You're doing things a little more complex. Still turn the model back around to where you started. Also, if you get a little bit of speed, it's going to line the model back up. Okay, now those are the basics of the auto recovery. It's going to go back to level when you flip the switch, and it's going to point the direction you took off at. Uh, one thing to note, it's going to go back to the angle you started at. So if it's an extremely windy day, it's going to go back to level, and it's going to basically kind of drift with the wind as you started it. But it's going to get you level, get you in a safe position, let you recover from just about anything you're doing.